morning this is a slightly different one again normally when people want me to make a, a ring from a coin they will have an idea of a coin which is as an example a 1960 six penny 1967 florin that sort of thing these are these are threepenny bits that i'm making for a uh, a craft stall that we'll probably be doing maybe in August. I like to get these things early. Uh, it's currently the 11th of June. Uh, so I had an inquiry saying, could you make a ring from a 5p? I don't know anyone who follows this will know that I did uh, attempt uh, to a size J. Uh, so this is one that um, I was experimenting with. I think this is a 5p. Come on. Ooh, fingers. Yes, this is 2007. 5p. And I put uh, an antique patina on it. So my worry was at some point the new decimal coinage changed from being cupra nickel to a steel based what's called a clad ring of a steel core and then nickel on the outside and they are almost impossible to make into a ring nicely and it damages the equipment and whatever so oops so i said yeah i'll have a go so this is the coin now the thing with these particular making a ring from from this sort of um <sighs> Uh, yeah, I've just gone blank. Sorry. The problem with making a ring from a coin that's been um, sent to me is that, unlike these, if I get that wrong, I've got loads of spare ones in there. Loads. This is the coin, though, so I can't afford to get this wrong. It has to be made from this coin. And the pressure, therefore, is such that... Um, as you can tell, you know, it freaks me out a little bit. I'm lost for words, which is unusual for me. So this is the coin. No other coin will do. It has to be this coin. And and when you have a sentimental attachment or an emotional attachment, I think that's lovely. I think it's quite, you know. So this is going to be made to a J. It's going to be for a promise ring. Uh, I obfuscated the person's name and address. So today we're going to, first we're going to punch a hole in there. I'm probably going to go, you see, I want, I want to keep the detail, but I don't want, I want a nice, if I show you on, where'd I put that? I mean, this is a nice dainty little ring. So I'm not going to use a quarter inch punch. I think I'm going to use the next size up. But it needs to be, I'm going to have to take some time on this because I don't want to run the risk of, you know. And this is the bit that always freaks people out. The first bit is where we do this. Take a perfectly good coin, stick it in a flame. Now this is the annealing process. And what this does is by heating the cupra nickel up, it softens it. You can see it's starting to be bright red there. Now that softens it to the stage whereby we can work it. Look at that, it looks a bit different now, eh? So that now, safety first, turn off the gas. I'll be using the gas quite a lot, so I'm not gonna turn it off on the main regulator just yet. But I will do at the end, safety first, second and third. So this is now softened. The more you work it, the harder it gets again. And um, the final sort of stretching on here and forming uh, is where it, it gets its structural, structural its, its integrity back. Now, we're going to punch a hole in it, in here, using... Our little Errol punch. Going for a three eighths Errol. Um, most of the coins I work with are pre decimal, and as a consequence, they are 
sized in Imperial, not a metrical. However, that there, I think it will be about perfect. This is about as small a coin as I really like to work with. This cone then, as you screw down, pulls the coin into the dead center. So when we apply the, the punch, clumsy, when we apply that, it punches a hole right in the dead center of the coin. So I'm gonna do that up by hand now, nice and gently. I'm gonna pop some lube around here, some engineering lube around here, and then we're going to whack a hole in it on the six ton press. Ooh, squishy. Oh, that went clean through. It is only a thin coin after all. This is where the coin's no longer a coin. Whoa, there's a bit from middle. Now that could, I suppose, be polished up. In years gone by, you might have made that into uh, a charm for a charm bracelet. I don't. I like to put it in exactly as it is because it shows you know, this is exactly as it was punched out. So I don't polish it. I don't clean the edges. I would just stick it in there as a, a novelty. Let's get the coin out of the punch. And there we have it. Yes. Next, I clean the inside of here up with a deburring tool. And that, as I hope everybody who's watched these videos before will know, is to stop any potential crack or fault in here on the inside compromising the integrity and splitting as we form it into a ring polished it that is probably not all from here i'd hope anyway <laughs> um, but there you can see we just want to reduce any risk of a crack in that becoming a split. And I always, for, for things like this, and it seems strange, I can knock one of those, because I've got loads of those coins, I can knock one of those up in an hour, start to finish, um, without any, any worries of it going wrong. Because if it does go wrong, it goes in my, uh, it goes in my sin bin, uh, which is stuck over there somewhere. Of all the coins that didn't work. For a commission like this, I'll always use a new deburring blade. And I know that sounds probably a little wasteful, but I will come back and use use it again on, on coins that I have a lot of. But I'll use a new deburring blade because everything about this ring now, this coin stroke ring now, can't afford to go wrong because this is not a coin, it's the coin. So I have to make the ring out of this coin. Can't get it wrong and use another coin. So that's why I always take a little bit of extra time and uh, and do things like, you know, use a new deburring blade and uh, make sure it's perfectly nicely polished. Next, the next part of this is to start forming it into the cone. And I have learned that my existing dies are actually too big. So I will use the one that came with the Durston stretcher. And I think it's, no, they see even that's too big. That's too small. That's just about right, said uh, the big bad wolf or whoever it was. Now, the first fold, if you can see on here, that detail on the back is going to be the inside of the ring. So the first fold is with this little stainless steel die. And all that is to do 
is to create the first tiny bit of folding. Make sure it's level. That's it. That's all. Let's have a look, see what that's like. Et voila. So that now can go back in with the other folding coons. That then now has started the shaping from being a disc to a cone and then will end up as a ring. This is going to be a size J. So if I get the sizing man draw here, I did um, size the other one to a J. So we're up this end. So that's where we want this one to be. It's not a huge amount of work, but it's enough just to mm, make my heart race a little bit because again, can't afford to get it wrong. So the next part of this folding process, again, we'll come back to, oops, there we are. We get that leveled up nicely in there. That's almost okay. And then we'll use one of these fiber cones in here. And I'm going to use two hands for this. And then we'll just form that cone a little bit more. So because I'm going to use two hands, and I'm not really very good at making videos, I'll pause and come back when I've done it. Back and kneeling. Not sure if I filmed that last bit. Did I film that last bit? I probably didn't film that last bit when I did the uh, when I did the little cone. Did I film? I didn't film just after I did it with that. Sorry about that. Right, safety first. Turn the flame off. This is where now we start on here, which again I'll need two hands for. Stretching it to make more of a ring ring shape and and making the oil in the middle bigger. This um, is a Durston ring stretcher uh, that are used by like jewelers instead of like me engineering sort of mucking it around engineering. Now that comes up in the middle and pushes these splines apart and then opening the uh, opening the ring. Again, I need two hands. Ooh. Now this is always a strange thing to explain to people. I have again uh, annealed it and I have also given a very gentle polish again around the non-read edge where we punch the hole out. I've then put it back on the stretcher but I've cushioned it between the metal and the inside of the ring with just kitchen roll. And the reason for that is just to help protect the inside detail because the inside detail is important too. We will lose some of it, it's inevitable, but it's nice to try and keep some of it. So this cushions it because otherwise metal on metal it would just flatten it off and it would just be a, you know, a nice smooth inside of the ring. But again, I need two hands. So pause and come back when it's done. This is now size A. We need to go to a J. So that's quite a lot of stretching, forming and fiddling to do. And as a, as a reminder, I can't afford to get it wrong. Because this is the coin. It's not a coin, it's the coin. So I'm going to anneal it on the little blurry torchy between every size going up which you will find a little boring if I were to do that so we're on a size A we'll come back when we're slightly nearing the J quite some time and two more of those later we are at a J and, and the thing is now I could have banged through this quicker but <sighs> keep coming back to this thing this isn't a coin, it's the coin that that matters. It's the symbolism of it. 
can't afford to get this wrong, can't afford to let it split. So we've got the non-read side to a J, nearly to a J. What we do now is we stretch it, at the moment we, we put it on that, ooh, come on, off you come. We put it on the ring stretcher like that. Now we turn it around. Because the um, reed side is always thicker than the non-reed side, we size it to the reed side and then the non-reed side will be slightly larger than a J because otherwise it will be a cone and not a ring shape. And then we squeeze the outside in ever so slightly. There'll be a little ridge on there, but that's how you recognize it's a coin. This has turned out quite nicely. So now, whew, where are we? Oh, right. Okay, we're a couple of hours into this. But that's okay. Um, you can't rush these things. And I wouldn't want to run the risk. As I said, yeah, it's, his, it's the coin, not a coin. It's the coin. Yeah, any of those, it wouldn't matter if they went wrong. There's just no way I can afford to let this go wrong. Ooh. Next, back on the stretcher with both hands, obviously, and then try and make it look a ring instead of a cone. But first, guess what we're going to do? <laughs> I'm not going to film that. I think people have seen me um, sticking enough rings in front of a blowtorch. We'll come back when hopefully I have got this more into the shape of a ring. Whew. This is the part now where um, we have oversized the non-read edge. And we now need to squish in the read edge. And this is the final few tweaks that we end up making. It doesn't need very much. Tiny, tiny amount. It's getting there. We need to go down probably one more size, but I think I'm gonna to have to flip. Yeah, I'm gonna to have to flip this over because the half sizes are on the opposite side. So come on, I need two hands. Hang on, that's better. So now, so in other words, you know, the, the next size up from this one is on the reverse of this die. Lovely bit of engineering that, by the way, isn't it? Durston. Now, I think this is probably going to be... Oh, maybe a little too much there. Oh, oh, oh. oh maybe not, though. Well, where'd you look at that? But here's the thing, I think that's slightly below a J now. Yeah, it's gone slightly below the J. So that's okay. This is now easy just to open back out to a J. I'm just gonna check the inside of that reed to see if there's much of a rim rim ridge there's a little bit of a ridge I might I think I'm going to trim the inside of the reed now I don't know if I can let's move that out of the way now if you look on here there is a ridge so just to make it slightly more comfortable to wear I'm going to shave the inside here off and the that would just make it slightly more comfortable and it'll also open the size out a little bit. And guess what? Need two hands for that. Hooray! We've got a J! Oh, it rhymes. I'm a poet. I didn't know it. Happy with that. Yes, I am happy with that. Hmm. That has turned out lovely, lovely. 
heart no longer in mouth. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, where's it gone? It's there. Sorry, don't zoom in. Zoom out. Right, because then I zoom out, I can then get the macro on here. Wow, look at that. Yeah. Yes, like this do I. Mm. And I'm still shaking a little bit because whenever I do one of these, like from a, a coin that someone sent, I am always kind of like just massively over cautious. And I know that a lot of that is probably down to my own kind of like confidence, confidence and things, but I just would hate. I mean, imagine uh, the, the, the emotional significance of this ring is more important than the fact that, you know, it's just a coin. It's This is the coin. Oh, right. Good, happy. Shaved the inside out a little bit. We've kept some of that detail on the inside. Look at that. Hey. Cushioning it with that kitchen towel. So now... I need to decide how best to polish this up and whether I'm going to leave a little bit of patina to bring out the detail because a high polish it doesn't you don't realize it's a ring a uh, coin sorry you know it's a ring because you can see it's a ring but a little bit of patina will just bring out Make that make that detail stand out. Don't know. I'll have a play, and I'll come back when I'm done playing. Well, this has turned out very, very nicely. Sorry about the, um, the piece of felt that it's on. It's covered in dust. But I think that I'm trying to get it so I can show the, the polish. See if I can get it under daylight a bit better. Yeah. So I decided not to go for a, a sort of like antique patina because this is only a 2010. I think it's actually come out really, really nicely. So there we have it. I. I'm going to put a very, very light ceramic, ceramic lacquer on there, <coughs> excuse me, which will wear off, obviously. It will always wear off, but it's easy to polish these up again just with a jewellery cloth. Yeah, look at that. Now, because it's cupra nickel, there's an amount of copper in there. There's always the um, possibility it will turn a finger slightly green once the lacquer's worn off if that's the case it's easy just to polish the inside of that out and put a, a nail varnish um, gel on the inside that works just as well but I'm very pleased with that I like that let's plonk it on here and then zoom out oh that's Trying to find the right, the right angle on here. Are you going to focus? No, probably not. Oh well. Come on, focus. That I'm, I'm pleased with that. I have to admit that was one of those, uh, one of those heart racing things because you just can't afford to get it wrong. There's only that one coin. That is it. That is that one coin. Hmm. 
that's it boys and girls if you like this sort of rubbish please feel free to subscribe to the channel I'm now going to send a copy of this video to the customer and um, and hopefully he will like it till next time whatever you're doing do it safely um, I've taken a bit more time on this than I would normally but I think it was worth it good take care cheers